Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, we will be taking a look at the Victorinox camper. So stay tuned. I bought this because I got a really good deal on it. I just couldn't pass it up. And any serious knife collector is absolutely going to have Swiss Army knives, especially uh, Victorinox. Now, um, I came across this for like $13 at my local exchange on based. I guess they were clearancing them out. And uh, knife collector, can't pass it up. And again, any serious collector is definitely going to have at least one, if not many, many, many um, Swiss Army knives. So anyway, um, the camper is probably one of the more popular Swiss Army knives. So, um, it should be pretty interesting, so let's take a close look. Swiss Army knives really have a long history, and um, I, if I went over it, the video would be way too long. But this thing has been to space with NASA. It's been on top of Mount Everest. It's been to the North Pole. It's just about been everywhere. It's been through wars, and um, they've been around since 1891. Now, of course, Swiss Army knife, the real ones, being Victory Nux and... Wanger um, um, are are made in Switzerland. Now Wanger and Victory Nux do have a couple of differences that you could see if I put them next to each other. If you get a Wanger, the shield looks like that, and if you get a Victory Nux, the shield looks like that. So there's some visible differences, and I think Wangers are basically being phased out. So because uh, Victory Nux uh, bought Wanger. So you're probably not going to find these too much anymore, or the the wangers. You'll you'll still see the victory nucks. So anyway, let's uh, go over some of the tools that you get. The camper comes with 13 items, and we'll take a look at the most important part first. Let's see, where is the main blade? Of course, you got the nail nick. There it is. You can see it's a basically slip joint construction. Uh, nothing locks up here. Although there there actually are some Swiss Army uh, knives that do lock up. Here's one right there. But um, I had reviewed that a while back. But anyway, slip joint right there. The length of this knife, the main blade right here, is about two and a half inches. If you the usable is just about two and a quarter, but if I go all the way down, it's uh, about almost two and five eighths for the uh, length from the handle all the way out or from the scale all the way out by the way the scales are plastic red that's basically um, the the main type of scale you would get with a Swiss Army knife and that's what they're recognized as and they could be changed you could pop them off and put new ones on which is a good thing because if you like your your scales to remain pristine um, unless you don't use them, they're going to get scratched because they're relatively soft plastic. That's really the only thing I don't like about the um, common Swiss Army knives, but they do have other versions where you might have like aluminum scales and, uh, and others. There's different versions. But for the common ones, you have these soft plastic scales that are pressure pushed on there. Anyway, back to the main blade. Steel. It's their own proprietary steel. It's somewhere between 420 and 440. Probably similar to uh, 428C. Not exactly. Hardness, it's uh, on the Rockwell hardness scale around 55, 56. Let's go ahead and very quickly. And you can see I'm just about push cutting there. Very, very sharp. Uh, most are, are very sharp out of the box. Nice, highly polished. And that's your with the blade, <laughs> the most common probably blade for Swiss Army knives right there. I'll let you take a look right there. Stainless steel, Swiss made in Switzerland. So, very common. I like has a little sharpening choil right there so when you're sharpening you don't have to worry about scraping that up if you're careful on your sharpening stone. I, I'll tell you, I just absolutely love Swiss Army knives. Very nostalgic. So anyway, that's uh, tool number one, the large blade. Also comes with a small blade right there. 
As you can see there's some oil. I just took this out of the package, so what'd you get? By the way, the steel the, the steel here with the hardness of 5556 is not the same as the rest of the tools. Each tool um, may or, or probably is a little different as far as hardness. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put these in because I don't want to cut myself. Um, next is the corkscrew. Now, I guess when you're camping, you uh, bring wine. <laughs> and there it is. Corkscrew. Now, um, the corkscrew really has limited use for every day, <laughs> unless you, you are a serious wine drinker. But um, you can make more use of this. There's a little uh, screwdriver that will fit into here where you could just sort of screw it in and it'll hold it right there for let's say if you wear eyeglasses you could have a nice little screwdriver handy now another thing that the corkscrew does is it it hides this little hole right there I bet you most people don't even notice that and what that hole is is to hold a straight pin so you could go ahead and stuff a a straight pin down there just like that you can push it all the way in and um, now you got a, a straight pin. That's what that's for, just to, to hide away a straight pin. So if you need one, you have one right there. But uh, it doesn't come with it. <laughs> it's just a place for you to put it. And that's not even listed on the features. So there, there's the secret of the um, day right there. So you get a corkscrew. Next is the can opener. Um, let's see where that can opener is. There we go. Can opener. And you can see how these things come with oil all over, which is good. But you got a can opener with a screwdriver. Um, this might be the bottle opener with a large screwdriver. I think, um, I'm sorry. This is the bottle opener with the large screwdriver. And you also have a wire stripper right there. Now I gotta find the can opener. There we go. There's the can opener with the little screwdriver on the end. And these do a, a very good job of opening cans. I mean, you gotta get used to them. It's not easy. You gotta practice a little bit, but they are some of the best that you can find in multi tools and uh, Swiss Army knives. All right, we'll go ahead and fold these in. These things have half stops, or at least that one had a half stop. I wonder if the, you know, I didn't check to see if the main blade had a half stop. No, no half stop. Okay, next, 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 next. Um, we have something right here. Um, now I don't know how to get this thing out. Huh. Oh, shoot. You know, I think, uh, I guess I'm going to have to, uh, there we go. We have a, a reamer right there. You can punch holes through leather with that, sort of like an awl, but they call it a reamer because it has like a sharp edge right there. You could also use that to sew. See how it has a it looks like a little sewing needle has a hole in there. What else do we have? Um, I know I didn't get all the tools out of this thing. Doo -doo -doo. Let's see, I'm going to have to take all these blades out to get to the saw. Where did they... Oh, you know what? The saw, you get to right here. You get, There's like a piece that you just sort of pull up right there. And you know, the saws work pretty damn good on Swiss Army knives. Look at those teeth right there. Nice, aggressive... You know, you're not going to cut a tree down with this, but you'll cut something, you know, that's like half an inch or an inch thick. Good for taking care of branches and things like that. Definitely do a, a pretty good job. Let's see, what else do we have? We have... Voila! Go ahead and take care of them zits and blackheads and splinters and things like that. Nice pair of tweezers hidden away again in the scales. Just like that. And after you get done eating some deer or whatever while you're camping, you got a tweezer. I'm sorry, you have a toothpick. <laughs> a little toothpick. I almost never use these. I like to, you know, if I needed a toothpick, I use a regular toothpick. I don't want to, you know, ruin the one that came with my Swiss Army knife. I'm, I'm funny like that. So, um, 
you know, unless I had some extra ones, I probably would never use them. So I think I covered all 13 items other than they count this key ring. Put your keys on. There is one. So um, that's uh, all the tools. Um, one other feature with the Swiss Army knives is that they tend to multiply like rabbits. If you if you collect these things, they uh, and if you leave them in a box, before you know it, they'll they'll start multiplying and and you'll end up with a big giant box of these things. Any knife collector, you just you just really can't help yourself. <laughs> But um, don't be fooled. These things actually are extremely useful, extremely, uh, extremely handy. And uh, if you're out there camping or, or even survival, these are definitely really good to have. They're good for EDC. They're, they're really great. And you can buy different Swiss Army knives with different tools depending on your, your needs. And these things can uh, last forever with uh, reasonable care. Here, here's an interesting one that I, I've had for probably about 30 years. <laughs> I'll just throw this in here. This is a Sharp. I, I'll tell you what, I can't find too much information on YouTube about this guy. But um, believe it or not, this, this thing... How long has it been since you've seen on a knife? You know, besides the Spydercos and, and things like that, but made in Japan. On a, on a Swiss Army knife. That's uh, back when Japan, made in Japan, was like made in China today. All the cheap crap used to come out of Japan. That's how old this is. That's before everything was made in China. So I really do recommend this Victory Nux camper, along with any other Victory Nux, or along with uh, any other Wanger, if you could still come across them. They're... Uh, Awesome as EDC, camping, um, in a bug out bag for um, just about anything. They're, they're great. And they also would make a wonderful um, kid's first knife, you know, as long as you trust your kid, your kid, not someone else's kid, your kid with a knife. Great gift, um, multi purpose. Be careful because uh, even if you draw a picture of a knife in some schools, they'll, they'll send you away for life. So, whatever. But, um, awesome night. Awesome night. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. I really do appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and especially you. And I hope you have a great evening. Take care. Bye.